The new DMZ mode can seem a bit daunting at first, so this is your beginner's guide to everything you need to know for DMZ. Now, it all begins here on the main menu before you even deploy. If we click over to the weapons tab, we can see our loadout that we're going to be taking into the DMZ, as well as what's in our backpack, as well as what's on our soldier. So let's break this all down very quickly. If we click over here, we can see we have insured slots and then contraband stash. The insured slot is a weapon that you can choose from Modern Warfare 2 multiplayer, literally ranging from every different weapon category, allowing you to choose a weapon that you want, as well as any blueprints and being able to go into the gunsmith and tune all these attachments to the way you want them. This insured slot is the only slot that allows you to bring in a weapon like this. And if you go into the DMZ and die with this insured slot, this will put your insured slot weapon on a cooldown, which can range from two hours to up to 10 hours. And we'll explain how to get that timer down in a little bit. But here we have the contraband stash where you'll start with a few weapons given to you, but any weapons you extract with will be part of this contraband stash. These are all weapons that range in attachments and rarity that you can find roaming around DMZ that you can take with you. For example, here is the M13B that everyone's trying to get. But if you look over, it says weapon permanently lost if left in DMZ. So if you die bringing any of these contraband weapons in, you lose them forever. And on the topic of dying, let's quickly answer the question, what happens if you die in DMZ? No matter how you're taken out, if it's killed by AI or killed by real players, you are eliminated and everything you have on you, be it your insured weapon or your contraband weapon, Weapon, as well as your backpack, everything inside your backpack, your two or three plate armor carrier vest, gas mask, kill streak, and self revive will all be gone. Now, if you die in DMZ of your insured slot and you have that cooldown, you can reduce that cooldown time by extracting successfully with cash. Not only that, but you don't even have to extract with cash. There's also dustbins around the map, as you see here, are labeled as dead drop, and cash deposited here reduces that insured weapon cooldown time. And this basically takes all the risk out of having to extract with a load of cash on you because as we'll break it down cash isn't necessarily that important to take out with you unless you want to get lots of xp but it's very useful for buying stuff whilst you're playing in the dmz all in all you can put two weapons to drop in with there's a choice of a tactical grenade a lethal and a field upgrade and not only can you carry two weapons but you can also put one in your backpack so if you find a weapon in the dmz that you want to take out with you as contraband then you can add it if you have a big backpack which you can find in the map furthermore there's also keys that you can find around the map it can be used to open strongholds as well as open open secret areas that are hidden all over the map. And we'll go into a lot more detail on those in a little bit. You can find these keys around the DMZ as well as by killing real players that are carrying them. And if you exfil with them, you have them in your stash ready to take in next time. The final important thing about DMZ before jumping in is faction missions. These are currently the main objectives of the DMZ. They give you a goal in mind to jump in to complete and also reward you with some great rewards. Say for instance here, Storming the Stronghold rewarded me with a Pendulum Blueprint for the TAC V, which is a DMZ exclusive reward. You can put up to three missions at a time when jumping into the DMZ. And completing all tier one missions under a faction will unlock tier two, as you see I have for White Lotus. And if you complete tier three of every faction, you can add another insured slot. So we've got a two and a three there. Okay, here we are, ladies and gentlemen. You'll notice we have a timer of 25 minutes ticking down. We are near the top of our Masra city. And with your insured weapon or the one you brought in through contraband, you'll have that on you. You have everything, but you'll notice that you only have one armor plate. That's because we need to get a two or three plate vest. So the first thing you want to immediately do is start just randomly looting around where you've spawned. For about a minute or two, you shouldn't have any AI around you, so it should be a pretty calm experience. But if you are an absolutely new beginner player, then the first thing you're going to want to do is obviously build up your character strength. So when it comes to a bigger backpack, because it is tiny right now, getting a two of three vested armor, getting self revives, getting plates. That's the beginner. The first thing you're going to want to do is immediately try and find a vehicle. I'm going to go ahead and grab this and then I'm actually going to go and run and get this chop top. The reason for this is that the AI are everywhere and by foot, you're not going to have a good time. I got ourselves a vehicle. The first thing you want to do if you are just starting out is to guarantee to find some decent loot is you're going to be looking for ammo depots. So you can see we've got one, two and three there. Someone's activated that SAM site near me. So I'm actually going to avoid that completely and we'll go for this ammo depot here where there are two. So let's go. Okay, so here we go. We've made it into a ammo depot. I think one of the main obvious things is first refill ammo, but also if you didn't spawn in with a gun, then there's a good chance you'll be able to find some decent loot in here. 
There we go. We've got an X12 now as our secondary. We've got a gas mask there as well. There's a two-plate armor vest, which is really good. But already we're a little bit more protected than we initially were. And oh, look at that. We've got an Expedite 12. Got another two-plate there. We've got a proximity mine. We've also got a self-revive kit, which is extremely important. And already some of the most expensive things to get in the game, we're already getting for free from here. And again, this is for those that are extremely beginner. Well, that's a bit of an exaggeration. I wouldn't say extremely beginner, but if you're just starting out after losing everything, everything or you've not really played it before then this is the way to go the main reason why we're going to these is just the fact that it's almost a guarantee that you'll find some decent stuff straight away the main thing you want to be doing from the very early beginning is just to scavenge a lot try and find cash try and find some valuable items as you see we've got a few if you start hoarding and collecting these items you're going to want to go and find a buy station so that's our nearest one and right next to it on the map you can also see an icon above us containing a uav tower so definitely useful to do that so that you know if there are enemies around you when you're going to these buy stations also shows you where all the ai are as well at these buy stations what you want to do is you want to sell all these random valuables that you keep getting as you see we now have five thousand. so the priority here is we want to get a medium backpack so we can carry more items buy armor plates so that we can obviously plate up and have more health if you don't already have the two plate armor vest and you can buy that here as well as a self revive kit these are the very important things that you need to be buying straight away to just survive now we've got a medium backpack we can immediately start picking up more stuff even if it is complete random stuff it still be worth something that we can then sell at the buy station here we're now fighting some like armored ai and as you can see these guys are awful but as you heard from the prompt one of them was a cartel member who dropped a key for us which is amazing we're now getting into some territory fights which i am not wanting i can go ahead and sell these valuables again so i have more cash then i can buy some more armor plates the main thing to realize with this compared to other modes is that you don't need to be extracting with all of this cash you want to be spending it so that you can be in a much better position when you go into the next game of dmz the thing you can do early game is these activities called sam sites this is also to be one of your missions that you choose before you jump into the game so that's really cool you'll get a reward from doing this if this is your first time as well as you can see heavily heavily protected by ai so we're gonna need to take these dudes out first but now that's all settled if we go up to the sam site we can go ahead and capture it now we've got to stay around it it's going to alarm some ai which is going to be uh yeah a little tricky which is why again you want to be suited and booted for this it's captured you'll see that it will keep looking around for any planes that are going to be flying over and these are care package planes no it's found one flying over it's shot upwards which is incredibly cool. Okay, the aircraft is destroyed and the cargo drop from it is marked on the map. So, oh, it's flying. There it is. It's falling. Right, let's go grab it. And here we go. It is here. So let's go ahead and open it. And as you can see, we've got an airstrike. We have a stronghold key card. And we also have a precision. Also, we've got some decent money there. I'm going to happily take that LMS over what I have. Very strong battle rifle. Able to take out AI from... Quite a good distance. And the SAM site is going to shoot it again. Wow, it's just gone for it again. Look at that. Oh, wow. No, it did get it. Let's go. It got it. It's landed kind of far, but we're going to go for it. Here is our second supply drop. Let's see what we're getting. Okay, so we've got an M4, another stronghold key card, another airstrike, and we've got an M4. I mean, you really can't go wrong with that. Let's stow that in our backpack. Now we're going to leave with three weapons. But at this point, it is time for us to leave. So how do you exfil? Well, on your map, there's going to be these little icons of a blue man going for a door. There are three of them on the map, which means there are only three points where you can actually exfil from. Okay, we're driving up to it now. And as you can see, there's the green smoke. So we just go up to it. We call the exfil helicopter. And then suddenly this is going to give us about a minute or so of a bit of a survival against some of the AI. So a little bit brutal here. Some areas can be way easier than others. Some areas it's a lot more open than say this. This has not been easy in itself. So now that the helicopter is here, you want to go ahead and run into the helicopter while you've got this timer so you and all of your squad and once you're on 
five seconds later, you'll have exfilled successfully with everything that we just got from that DMZ run. Oh my god, look at that enemy AI just rolling up on us. As far as beginner runs go to get yourself geared up, get yourself the things you need in order to jump in, the more exfills and get missions done, that is a good first run. Got a ton of XP there. We managed to bank three weapons. We got two stronghold key cards as well as a key, an airstrike. We also got a gas mask and a self-revive ready for the next game. If we now go over to our loadout, you can see that we have what we brought in that insured weapon. We got the contraband of the Kastov 74U. And we also have that M4, which we have banked now in our contraband. And we have a key, which we didn't use. As for backpack, we now have a medium one. On our soldier, we have two vested armor. We have a gas mask, a kill streak, and a self-revive. So we are set now to jump into the next match of DMZ. We actually have a loadout. So now we've gone over some of the basics. Let's now look at some of the more advanced parts of DMZ. The first and simple one is strongholds. Now, in order to get into a stronghold, you're going to need to get a stronghold key. And you can find them by killing AI enemies, which they drop fairly often. But if you want to continuously do strongholds and get some really good loot and money, then you can just buy stronghold key cards from a buy station for 5,000. That way you're getting unlimited stronghold key cards and you can basically do as many strongholds as you want to within a single game. Now, these are filled with AI, which are a lot stronger. You'll find them with riot shields and all sorts. But once you take them all out, you'll have completed that stronghold and you'll be able to get all the rewards contained within it. And that is also one of the early faction missions for one of the two factions you can choose. But you can definitely take advantage of those within the DMZ. Now, the two highest level activities to do right now in the DMZ, which are the most risky, is the weapon cache and the chemist. So let's break these both down and show you the easy easiest way to do this. Chemist is a unique per match event where you're going to be going up against a really, really difficult boss called the Chemist within the nuclear radiation zone of the DMZ map. By killing the Chemist, he is going to drop the M13B, which is the brand new M13 for season one. If you want to unlock this for multiplayer and war zone, then you have to grab this weapon and extract it. Now, there's a very easy way to do this, and I'll show you how. Part of it comes down to where you spawn on our Masra, because if you spawn spawn as close to this thing as possible, then you're going to be one of the first to get in there and have the most chance of getting it. But it's simply the easiest way to do this is you're going to need to have a vehicle. If you have a vehicle, this is going to make your life a lot easier because all you're going to do is run the chemist over and then pick up his weapon. So in this gameplay, it's over here in this radiation circle. There is going to be a load of AI which get absolutely wrecked by your vehicle, which is always nice because you don't have to be shooting around, but it is going to be tense. It is going to be close. You're going to be red screened quite a lot, especially if you don't have a lot of armor. But within that radiation zone, you just want to keep driving it around until you spot this guy. And as you can see, he is on his own. He's got a yellow hazmat suit on. And you can tell that that is him because it's a very unique look to any other soldier you fight against. But as you see, he is right here. I failed to mow him down the first time. Keeps maneuvering around me, but it doesn't matter because we managed to flatten him and we managed to get it. Get yourself into a safe area. Make your way back over to where you ran over the chemist and just very quickly try and find that M13. There's a chance that there'll be other players around as well. So you need to be extremely quick about this. But here we go. M13, we got it. Now all you need to do is just successfully extract. So I wouldn't even bother doing anything else in DMZ if you want to secure this weapon. Just make your way to to an exfil point and get the heck out of there. The other high value objective right now is to find the weapon cache, which is going to be somewhere on our Masra, and you can find it by a big yellow circle that will contain a sort of briefcase icon with a question mark in the middle. Once you are within that area, start searching around and there's going to be a ton of AI that are going to spawn and you'll have a prompt on your screen that a juggernaut has spawned nearby. Now the juggernaut boss is going to be the one that is going to have this briefcase and the chances of other players also trying to do this at the same time as you is probably going to be pretty high so i'd recommend doing this if you spawn very close to it at the start of a game otherwise you might be a little bit too late but somewhere in this vicinity is going to be the juggernaut that will spawn it doesn't really have a marker per se you're just going to be keeping your wits about you listen out because once you hear that minigun spinning you know that you are doomed in this gameplay i died from the juggernaut but my friend managed to kill him and picked up the weapon case but once you pick this up as you can see on the minimap 
map, you now have that permanently around your character and everyone in the game can also see that on the overall map. Every player will also be prompted that the weapon case was picked up with a location of where it was and they can track you in real time whilst you have this case. So what you want to do is essentially the moment you get this is you're going to want to exfil. Now what's really cool is if one of your teammates manages to exfil with this briefcase, you're going to unlock one of seven rewards. The first being an RPK blueprint. As long as the person with the briefcase exfil feels everyone in the squad will also get the rewards like as if they picked up the briefcase as well you can see right here my friend x filled a lot sooner than i did and when i x filled i also unlocked this amazing rpk blueprint called caution tape and there are one of seven rewards that you can earn from this the first being the rpk and then it goes into calling cards and emblems but you get an amazing operator skin for getting all seven if you or one of your friends pick up this weapon case and you're making your way to the field and you get taken out that weapon case is going to be dropped and anyone else in the game can go ahead pick that up and then it's a race to the x field to hopefully leave with it and in some games this can be absolutely brutal as you see in this example right here it didn't go smooth sailing at all we managed to get the case from a team that originally got it and then we got swarmed immediately by a team in an armored truck who then raced to the nearest x field point on top of the observatory where it's then a race for everyone else in the game to try and get to the observatory and take them out before they successfully leave with it so it is vital that if you are trying to do this that you have a good vehicle ready to go the moment you pick up that case because you are not going to survive for very long if you're running by foot now those are the very high risk high reward objectives to do in dmc but there is so much more to do of course you've got your faction missions and then there's also contracts we might have shown a few so far in this video but a few other examples of things you can do with one being a nuclear material contract where there's going to be two places around the map where you're going to need to secure nuclear material and that will take you somewhere on the map to pick up some Geiger counters which you might recognize if you've played any of the Spec Ops missions and it will then give you two marked areas where you're going to need to hold the Geiger counter out to try and find where the nuclear material is. It's a simple case of looking around until your Geiger counter is basically at 10 and then you're going to pick up one of these nuclear fuels which are worth 10,000. Then can go ahead and find the other one and once you've done that you will have 20,000 dollars worth of these nuclear materials that you could sell to the shop and instantly be able to bolster your loadout for a future dmz run there's another contract called ship cargo where you'll be delivering cargo to a hlz and you'll be getting ten thousand dollars for that and that involves you driving to a river where a boat is going to be dropped off you simply need to drive the boat to a location whilst an attack chopper is chasing you down and shooting at you. And once you drive to a certain spot, it will pick up the cargo and you'll be rewarded $10,000. There's also a destroy supplies contract in which you will have two sort of bomb sites that you need to go over to and plant a charge at each of them and then simply just run away. For the second site that you've got to plant a bomb on, there's going to be AI that are going to spawn and try and defuse it. So you need to defend it until it detonates. And then once that's done, you'll get 7,500 cash for doing it. Now, there are so many more contracts than that that I don't need to show you all of them in this video because they're sort of self-explanatory, but most of them will grant you cash if you want to go ahead and do all those. But do be careful as one of them is a squad hunting contract where if you pick it up, you'll be able to hunt and kill a real player. But it works both ways as someone can pick it up and it could be you that they need to hunt and you have five minutes on you before that disappears. But the real beauty of this game mode is the risk and reward when it comes to being up against real players there's definitely situations that we've shown you here where there are going to be real players in your way such as getting the weapon cash or going for the chemist and there's so many ways that you can deal with it you can choose to be ruthless in the dmz or use the proximity chat to try and be friendly and stop situations from getting a bit too hot either way you'll know if you take out real players because you'll see a little downed icon appear on their bodies and you'll obviously see a kill feed name with yourself killing someone else and you can grab their backpack get all of their loot and this is the best way to find unique rare keys that will unlock secret areas of the map now these keys are normally described as a key that opens a certain area and it'll give you a coordinate of where exactly that is so it's not entirely specific but it'll give you a vague direction of square of the map on where you need to go in order to use that key and what's really cool is if you do kill people you can pick up their dog tag and you can sell that to the shop for 2500 or you can choose 
to just gain a little collection of dog tags. But if you choose not to exfil until the very end of the game where the radiation is pushing in and the timer is counting down, there will be one final exfil chopper that will be in a random location that you'll need to get to and get on board. Otherwise, you will die from the radiation and lose everything. And as you see right here, I really mean it. You can be ruthless. You can take people out right as they're trying to get on the exfil helicopter, not even go for their loot because you physically can't because the game is ending and you can feel like a right evil person doing it. But I hope this video really helped you out to give you that overall beginner's guide overview to how to play DMZ and what you should be going for in the mode. There'll be tons more videos on DMZ on the channel, so if you like this one, be sure to subscribe, like the video, and I'll see you for another video soon.